And wasting no time, Justice Kavanaugh keeping his promise by hiring four female law clerks. I'm proud that all four of my newly hired law clerks at the Supreme Court are women, a first in the history of the Supreme Court. All right, tonight's panel here to weigh in, former spokesman for Obama for America, Zach Friend, and the CEO and president of Concerned Women for America, Penny Young Nance. Welcome to you both. Good to see you tonight. Good to be here. Okay, I want to read a little bit more of the New York Times opinion piece that Trey cited, and it said, white women, come get your people. That is the headline. It said, white women benefit from patriarchy by trading on their whiteness to monopolize resources for mutual gain. In return, they're placed on a pedestal to be, quote, cherished and revered, but all the while denied basic rights. Penny, are you being denied your basic rights? Wow, I got to tell you, I'm still rolling from what Kamala Harris said. She does not represent all women. By the way, Concerned Women for America is the nation's largest public policy women's organization. And uh, a lot of what I've heard tonight, read from the New York Times, is racist and um, belittling of our experience. By the way, I and Shannon, as you know this, I am a survivor of a physical assault and a uh, attempted rape on a Virginia running path when I was pregnant with my first child. I take all this very seriously. And what they have managed to do in the left is to really gin up enthusiasm like I have never seen since the last election and many years maybe before that. It has been, our phones are ringing off the hook. Women are saying, how can we get involved? We had a rally of 500 women um, outside the Senate, although you didn't see it covered other than probably on Fox. Um, and you had, we had women walking the halls in Women for Kavanaugh t-shirts because we believe in fairness. We believe in equal protection under the law. We believe uh, as the mama bears of this country that we want to have fairness for all, both of our children, our, our sons and our daughters. Well, let me, Zach, let me bring you in here because obviously the left was very motivated by this too. And we saw scores of women. I was here covering the vote on on Saturday, uh, there were hundreds of people on the stairs of the Capitol and then onto the Supreme Court. I mean, clearly they were very motivated by this, and Democrats feel good that that's potentially an end for them with this very important uh, voting block of suburban women come the midterms. Well, I think there's been a pretty significant movement uh, toward the Democrats for suburban women since 2016. But I'll say that actually this confirmation fight seemed to also solidify the Republican base as well. I think it makes the Senate a more difficult grab for the Democrats right now, and I think uh, as as Mark Penn had actually said on an earlier show, right now I think you could use some more adults in the room in general, right? Where I think we need to go at this point is actually having uh, some sense of healing across the country, some people that actually can take the partisanship out and actually try and bring democracy back to the country because a lot of senses of people is that uh, the government isn't working for them, the court isn't working for them, and they feel like their voice isn't being heard at all. And I think if the Democrats can tap into that sense and the sense of, uh, in essence, being the adult in the room, then actually they'll be successful in November. I think if we continue the petty fights, uh, both sides are are actually engaged in pretty significant petty fighting right now. I don't know how this will play out. Yeah, people have pretty bad taste in their mouth. All right, I want to play a little um, back and forth on how the media is being perceived in this whole thing, and then we'll get you both to comment. Do you think uh, the, the, the press is coming out of this looking weaker uh, because many people feel that the press chose a side through this? Yes, uh, certainly that's the way it's going to look to um, Trump supporters and to people who've been questioning the media's uh, bias and their ability to report straight for a long time. And we know where the public trust numbers are um, for the press generally, and it's somewhere down below the basement. Zach, I think we're worse than Dennis now. <laughs> what are ratings? Well, I tell you, I mean, right now you're not rewarded for doing true journalism. I, I mean, people are self-selecting into their biases, both on social media and traditional media. I mean, I think a lot of people that are watching right now have a certain viewpoint, just like people who watch other networks have their own viewpoint. And I think that a lot of journalists got into this for the right reasons, but they're rewarded for breaking a story even when they don't have all the facts of the story right now. It's more expediency than fact, and I think that's problematic. Very quick. You, you know, journalists are people, and I unfortunately I saw so much of their own bias shine through, particularly in in this case. Even you know, even perhaps even here, I think it's really important for us all to step back and to let the healing begin. Yeah. By the way, everyone is welcome here on Fox News tonight. Yeah. You can come, no matter what you're thinking at home. We'd love to have all of you. All right, Zach and Penny, thank you both thank you. very much.